What's up you guys, David here once again for another review video. Today I'm in my buddy Michael's 2011 CRZ. This was actually Honda's attempt, I think attempt is the right word, at creating a new CRX or a spiritual successor to the CRX. Now when it comes to the body lines, check. I see where they were going with it. It's very similar, it's more modernized, which means a little bit more bloated, but that's okay. That's just, you know, safety regulations, all that good stuff but the interior is much better than a CRX, and it's much more comfortable. However, what threw everybody for a loop, they put a hybrid system in it, and that's what turned a lot of people off of the CRZ. One of my friends named Zach, you might remember him with his blue Honda hatch. He had that blue Honda hatch for a long time, but he also had a daily at one point, and that was a CRZ. He was like, yeah, it's a great car, you should drive it, and I did drive it and I thought the gauge cluster is my favorite thing about this car. And the gauges in the middle change color to whatever mode you're in. So right now we're in basically the cruise or eco mode. So it's green in the middle. And when you stop, the car completely shuts off like a Prius. So when you're stopped, you're really like, wait, is the car broken? I'm not used to this, because most performance cars, you know, you have to have either a BMW that has the engine shut off or something much more expensive like a 918 or something. Basically, this is, as far as we know, the only hybrid with a stick. And it's a six-speed transmission. It's wonderful. This has a Dragon Ball on it. You know, M4, Dragon Ball Z, you gotta have it. It's great. Honestly, the car drives really, really good. Now, is it as raw as a CRX? No. <laughs> I'm not even gonna compare that and honestly I don't even think it's really fair to compare the CRX to the CRZ because their goals were so different this was supposed to be a fun gas mileage saving sporty car to get you around every day without blowing a bunch of money on a turbo kit and everything else on the old Honda but on the bright side this one is modified and that's why I really wanted to say yes to this review this has a supercharger on it so yeah this is a supercharged CRZ and it sounds like a kitten just loving you all day. It's wonderful. Essentially, it uses a piggyback system, and with that, you gain probably 50, 60 some horsepower above that. This came with like 130 crank horsepower, so that's like maybe 90 or 100 to the wheels. Now you're pushing maybe 150, somewhere around there, and in this little car, you notice a difference. So if you just wanna be a backyard warrior, a back road warrior, and not get in trouble, this might be the car for you because it's not loud, this has a stock exhaust on it, you would never know it's supercharged until you get into that. <laughs> Funny, because I'm still in the economy mode and it still sounds like that. It just does not compute with my brain. Typically, when you're in a Honda that's modified, you hear a blow off and all that good stuff with the turbo. But with this being the hybrid, being quiet, being a commuter car, and then all of a sudden, that shows up. It's just so strange. This actually has stop tech brakes all the way around, so you stop on a dime, so that is nothing to worry about. On stock suspension even, it feels great. Honda makes the best shifters in the market. This thing feels like it has a short shifter on it. And I actually asked when I first got in the car, nope, feels like an S2000 shifter, and that's the biggest compliment you can give anybody. In sports mode, really easy interface. It's on my left. Okay. Already you notice the difference in throttle response. See, I just messed up my clutch because it feels different even with the clutch setup. The clutch in this car is very easy, but it does feel like it wants to be much more aggressive when I'm driving in sport mode. Oh, traction control button's over here. Sport mode, normal, and economy. And that's just easy. It's much easier than a lot of other brands where you're going through six different menus to change your mode. Not gonna hurt the car. I'm just gonna downshift to see or hear what it sounds like in sport mode. Okay, let's go. It just goes. That's awesome. <laughs> what is this sorcery? I remember when this car came out and it had kind of split reviews. There's a lot of people going, how dare Honda make a hybrid sports car? But at the same time, we shouldn't be scared of hybrid sports cars anymore. We have the 918, the McLaren P1. We have all these crazy hybrid sports cars now. So we should let companies have that trickle down and see what it does. And we can have more fun and not be stuck at the gas pump all the time. I know I sound like some 
green loving you know, Greenpeace tree hugger, but it's true. If we don't have to do that, we should accept that. So now I'm in sport mode. It's red in the center of the gauges. And by the way, for some reason, I'm gonna call Honda out on this. They didn't give us back seats, but they gave Japan and Europe back seats. Are they saying we're fat? I mean, they wouldn't be wrong, but I mean, I think that's very curious to hear that they gave us only two seats and maybe their excuse was, oh, but maybe the US enthusiasts is more hardcore and they want two seats and lighter weight. No, I know that they just wanted to call us fat in a very indirect way. So yeah, I wouldn't want to sit back there anyway. There's no space. The trunk space is actually really nice. You even have a privacy cover you can pull out, but the biggest thing about this car I would say is when you pop the hood when you pop the hood it is a very strange layout the blower has a belt like that thin and it sits on top at an angle and then the motor itself sits almost at an angle it's really strange you can see the injectors and all that sitting in a strange way and it's just cool to see because then on the right is the harness and all that and it was a plug and play harness you don't have to splice which is even better so michael goes to caffeine octane the big car meet here in atlanta and he was saying that you know people on the side of the road were yelling at him yeah rev the motor blah 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 and he revs it and it sounds like a dying cat <laughs> it's not going to impress anybody with this crazy sound from outside but inside it's just a hoot dude okay Okay, so I was all the way in it. No torque steer at all, first of all. Second of all, I was going around the corner, very confident, car was planted. It kind of pushed a little bit of understeer, but not too much to the point where it was annoying. It was like enough to kind of like keep me safe, if that makes sense. But it just pushed a little bit towards the right, but I came right back in when I added more throttle. And yeah, it was easy, easy to go around corners this thing, one-handed. <laughs> okay, so that's what a supercharger should sound like, man. If you're paying good money for a blower, it better make you smile for miles. Oh my god, I just realized this is the first twin screw supercharged Honda I've ever driven, and I decided to do it on the hybrid. <laughs> because a lot of people with the RSX systems, or the Type S and all that, the K series, people did that a lot as well. It's just interesting to see. <laughs> it's just interesting to see how this was applied. And I think it was worth it. I think it's really cool. It adds a lot of character to this car that I think wasn't there in the first place. This car did its job of being a fun hybrid, but it didn't have any character, I don't think. And that's what the CRX had over the CRZ. It's comfortable, it drives smooth, it was well engineered, the gauges are super futuristic, and it has a stick, and you save a bunch of gas. I mean, I'm looking down at his gas mileage meter and it is just silly. Sometimes hitting over 60 miles to the gallon cruising. I don't get it. shift oh yeah uh, okay so a little bit of floatiness in the back I've noticed the reason you feel the floatiness in the back sometimes is because is where the battery sit for the hybrid system so when you're correcting that with your throttle by trying to balance out the weight in the back so that's something I never really thought about until Michael told me and I thought that was really interesting. I was like, I wonder why it's coming around in such an interesting way. But if you think about it, rear engine cars like Porsches and stuff, that's what they do to correct their issues. I know I just compared a CRZ to a Porsche. You don't have to remind me in the comment section. I'm in a parking lot right now. I'm gonna demonstrate how the hybrid system works, just like any other hybrid, just like a Prius essentially, but way more fun. So I'm cruising, I'm cruising, and at a stoplight. Silence. That's, and then as soon as I let off the brake, 
Nothing, nothing, nothing. Let's see, okay, clutch, clutch in, done. Just like that. So I will say there's one thing about the CRZ with the blower on the piggyback that is interesting. So it has like basically a fifth injector issue. And this isn't Michael's fault. It's just when you do this, sometimes it's a little finicky. Basically, if I don't floor it above, not floor it, but stay in it above 4,000 RPM, the car will get maybe a little confused in the ECU and then go into limp mode. So earlier that happened to us and I literally thought I blew up his car and I was terrified. All I had to do was turn it back, turn it off, let it do its thing, reset, and everything's good now. I wanna see more of these at autocrosses. Like I wanna see more of these doing what Honda wanted people to do, drive to work and then go drive at an autocross or something. Because it could compete, there's no doubt about it. It's just you'd have to have somebody behind the wheel who's willing to kind of push the RPMs at the top. But that's, that's about it. That's all I gotta say about that. But other than that, guys, I wanna thank each and every one of you for watching this review on a hybrid. It was a great time. And what do you guys think about the CRZ? Do you think that Honda did the right thing building it? Or should they do a more raw CRX in the future and just call it the CRX and just not be afraid? I don't know if this day and age they'd be able to build another CRX, but I hope so. And with that, I upload every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday, and I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy. Goodbye.